Welcome everyone to the virtual ALF Liver Walk webinar. We will be briefly discussing childhood obesity, and there will be many more webinars uh, which are more elaborate throughout the, the year. Uh, but uh, we wanted to welcome everyone. Uh, uh, so thank you for, for, for your attendance. Childhood obesity is a major national problem, approximately 18.5% or about 13.7 million children between 2 and 19 years of age are obese. Obesity prevalence in children and adolescents has almost tripled since the 1980s. An average American adult is actually more than 24 pounds heavier than in the 1960s. The prevalence of obesity was 42.4% in 2017-2018. And if you look from 2000, 1999 to 2000, uh, to this point, the prevalence of obesity increased from 30.5% to, to this number. The prevalence of severe obesity increased from 4.7 to 9.2%. And what's sta uh, staggering is that 50% of adults with diagnosed diabetes are obese. This graph looks at the obesity trend throughout the US, and what we are seeing is um, the prevalence of obesity by state. As you can see, uh, there were several states in the 10 to 14 percent obesity in the 1990. Let's see what happened over the next 10 years. So if you see over 10 years, um, they had to, the two additional categories, which is 15 to 19 percent and greater than 20 percent, had to be added. And in fact, the original 10 to 14 percent, which covered most of the nation, was in the minority now. And this gets even scarier as we go over the next 10 years. By 2010, several new additional categories had to be added. In fact, if you look, uh, the original 10 to 14 percent was, was not there anymore. Um, that was covered by the greater than 30 percent prevalence. Most of the states now were at least 20% and higher. If you look at this trend from 2018, which is another eight years from that point, um, a lot of country is in the greater than 35% uh, prevalence with uh, many pockets in the 30 to 35% range. And there are hardly any which are uh, in the 20, 25% or less range. So this is, this is scary. So what is obesity and how it is measured? So uh, 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 a topic which um, you know, is also discussed with obesity is overweight. And this generally refers to an excess of body weight. Methods to directly measure body fat are not easily available in practice. And obesity is thus often assessed by means of indirect estimates of body fat, say from anthropometrics. The index of choice continues to remain body mass index, and this is an accepted standard a measure for overweight and obesity for children two years of age and older. Unlike adults, children also grow in height and weight, and BMI in children thus vary with age and sex. In 2000, the NCHS and the CDC published the BMI reference charts for children between two and 20 years of age, um, for, um, uh, uh, you know, for both boys and girls, as shown in these figures. The consensus supports the following. Underweight is a BMI less than the fifth centile. A normal weight is a BMI between the fifth and the 85th centile for age and sex. Overweight is a BMI above 85th, uh, sorry, between the 85th and the 95th centile. And obese is greater than 95th centile for age and sex. Um, the above definition does have some limitations, but it has been proposed because it is a clinically practical solution. And what is also scary is almost 4 to 10 percent of children, and depending on the data we look at, in the U.S. have severe obesity, which is classified, again, by, you know, a BMI greater than 120 <clears> percent. <throat> when we look at the prevalence of obesity, it has risen all around the world. In fact, if we look at um, England, Canada, France, you know, we see similar trends, trends in an increase in obesity. The change in prevalence of obesity by uh, various groups within childhood have also risen. 
uh, over the last one to two decades. In fact, within preschool children, which is two and five years of age, it went from five to 13.9 percent. And you can see a similar trend in the six to 11 years and the 12 to 19 years also. The severity of obesity during adolescence is an important uh, predictor. And why this is important is that in a large US population study, almost three quarters of adolescents with severe obesity remained severely obese in adults. I also wanted to touch on this idea called adiposity rebound. This is quite unique to the pediatric world, and it's a point between five to seven years of age when there is a decline in where the decline in the childhood BMI ends and it begins to rise, as you can see in this graph on the right. Early adiposity rebound increases the risks of adult obesity. Let's look at some of the other predictors. Breastfeeding uh, for three or more months is associated with a lower risk for overweight children. Physical activity is an important one. A sedentary lifestyle promotes weight gain. In fact, some data suggests that two hours increment in spend watching television increase the risk of obesity by 23% and by, of diabetes by almost 14%. Sleep deprivation is also considered a predictor uh, for, for obesity. Um, um, increased uh, intake of sugar sweetened beverages is another predictor. And so these other ones like gut microbiota, genetic factors, and endocrine factors have been reported. Let's look at some of the comorbidities, and we don't have time to go through each of these. And as I said, these will be present, presented throughout the year. But, 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 mod, but, but endocrine complications, cardiovascular complications, uh, pulmonary problems, psychosocial problems are all associated with, with, with obesity. I thought I'd also discuss NAFL and NASH, uh, which has an associated with, uh, association with obesity, insulin resistance, um, as well as sedentary lifestyles, um, NAFL is basically the presence of an abnormal amount of fat in the liver. It's non-alcoholic fatty liver. And this idea called NASH or non-alcoholic state of hepatitis occurs when there is damage to the liver. So things like hepatocytic ballooning, hepatic inflammation, fibrosis or scarring are sort of hallmarks for, for NASH. What is concerning is that NASH can progress to significant fibrosis, which can ultimately lead to the need for a liver transplantation. And in some patients, the advanced fibrosis can also lead to cancer called hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, again, NAFL and NASH are very important topics, and they would be reviewed in, in, in webinars and discussions throughout the year as part of uh, ALF sessions. Uh, the cornerstone of therapy for, for obesity is, is diet and exercise. Um, so let's walk um, um, in the spirit um, of the, the liver walk. Um, uh, let's make this a success. Uh, welcome to the liver walk. Thank you very much.